Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sid underscore Dwyer. And in today's video, I want to talk about Liam Payne. And he is someone who I definitely expected to never talk about. I don't think he's been on my radar since he had that Twitter beef with Tyler Oakley. But recently, he's come back on my radar and many other people's as well because he's been coming for his ex-bandmates and making some interesting claims. And this kind of behavior wasn't all that surprising to me, to be honest, because he's had quite a lengthy past of problematic behavior that I haven't really seen anybody talk about yet. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go over in this video. So to start off with, Liam auditioned for X Factor in 2008. He made it to the boot camp stage of the competition and then was cut. But then Simon had a change of heart and asked Liam to progress to the home visits stage of the competition, where he was then subsequently cut anyways. And then Simon suggested that he return in two years. So in 2010, he returned to X Factor. And once again, he was cut short, not even making it to the home visits stage this time around. But thanks to a suggestion from Nicole Scherzinger, Liam was given a lifeline. They decided to put together two groups, one girl group and one boy group. And these groups were made up out of the already eliminated contestants. So these people had already been eliminated from the show, like their hopes and dreams had been cut. And yeah, as you know, this is the second time that this has happened to Liam. And the boy group was made up of Liam, Niall, Louie, Harry, and Zane. And as we know, this group was named One Direction. So when they then qualified in the group's category of the competition, they progressed to the home visits and then made it onto the live shows. And in the live shows, it was usually presented to us as Liam being the leading man of the band. He was always featured front and center and his vocals always headlined every performance, which did make sense because he was the most experienced and his vocals were considered to be one of the best in the groups along with Harry and Zayn. But regardless of who the leading man was, all of the members of the band became massively popular and One Direction ended up placing third on X Factor. And then following X Factor, Simon Cowell signed them to his entertainment company, Psycho Entertainment. From then on in February, 2011, they released their first book titled One Direction. Forever Young, our official X Factor story. And then later that year in September, they released their first single, What Makes You Beautiful. And that song was a commercial and international success, reaching number one in several countries. And then just a couple of months later in November, the band released their first album. And much like their first single, it was also an international and commercial success. They became the first UK band to have their debut album reach number one in the US. And initially they were only going to tour this album in the US, but because of the high demand, they added Australian and US legs to the tour. And from then on, they became the world's biggest boy band. They released five studio albums. They released two more best-selling books. They did stadium tours. And Louis and Liam were named as the band's highest earners because they wrote the most songs. Liam was credited for co-writing 31 songs to be exact. But as great as all that sounds, it wasn't always smooth sailing. Because in 2015, Zayn left the band mid-world tour. And because Zayn was one of the lead vocalists, he was relied on quite a bit in the performances, so his departure left some pretty big gaps. But according to Harry in an interview, it was Liam who stepped up and took over all of Zayn's solos. And then after the release of their fifth album, the band went on an indefinite hiatus. And this gave each member of the band an opportunity to pursue some kind of solo career. But outside of their music, pretty much every member of One Direction made their mark on pop culture that was going to follow them into their solo careers. Like Niall is known as just a nice little guy, Louis and Harry have that Larry conspiracy, and Zayn's departure from the band was pretty big news. And as for Liam, he was definitely the most controversial of the group, whether it was because of him unenthusiastically taking photos with fans or supporting homophobia, there was no shortage of controversy around Liam. So now I want to talk about probably the most major controversy that Liam has been in. Basically in early 2014, he tweeted, at Willie Boss Hog, huge love to you slash your family. Huge respect for your business prosperities and the family values you still all behold. Big fan. So who is Willie Boss Hog and his family and his family values that Liam is such a big fan of? Willie Boss Hogg is Willie Robertson, star of the reality TV show Duck Dynasty. Willie and the rest of his family featured on that show are mainly known for two things, selling their duck hunting products and their conservative evangelical Christian views. 
A month earlier, Willie's father, Phil Robertson, who didn't have Twitter at the time of Liam tweeting that tweet out, was suspended from the show for racist and homophobic comments. He called homosexuality a sin and put it in the same category as bestiality. So those were the family values that Liam was tweeting out support for after he got suspended from the show. As you can imagine, Liam's tweet was met with a lot of mixed reactions. Perez Hilton replied asking if he was hacked. A number of responses were assuming that Liam was joking or being sarcastic. And a lot of people were also confused. I think it was a pretty shocking thing for people to comprehend at the time. The early 2010s were a big time of acceptance. Coming out videos were still a thing, but the world was becoming a more accepting place. Like we were really on the up and up in terms of LGBT acceptance. So for someone as big as Liam in a beloved boy band to tweet out support for homophobic views, it was pretty jarring. But someone who wasn't jarred by it and saw it for what it was as it happened was one of the biggest gay YouTubers at the time, Tyler Oakley. Because of that, some beef sparked between the two and what made it all the more complicated was the fact that Tyler was a massive One Direction fan. But I don't want to derail this video too much, so I've made a separate video about that whole situation available on my Patreon page. Anyway, after the backlash, Liam made a bunch of responses on his Twitter. He said, being a fan of someone's show and the way they still hold a family together doesn't mean I am okay with all they say. And then he started calling out journalists who were reporting on the story. After that, things pretty much just simmered down for him. But that was not the end of Liam and Duck Dynasty. Him and his friend Andy Samuels hung out with the cast of Duck Dynasty. And this picture was taken of them together. It was Andy who posted this to his Instagram and then later deleted it. And then later, Willie Robertson wished Liam a happy birthday and Liam reposted it to his Instagram account. Liam, happy birthday from the crew at Duck Commander. I wanna see a little beard coming out, man. Come on, let's roll. And yeah, that's about where Liam's past with Duck Dynasty ends. And I think it's worth noting that all of the tweets of support and the Instagram posts, except for the group photo one, are all still up. You can all still view them on his social media. So evidently he still stands by everything that he said. And that Duck Dynasty situation was the start of a string of situations where Liam didn't have the best takes when it came to LGBT matters. Some people might chalk these things up to just a slip of the tongue or homophobia or some other conclusion, but I'm just going to present the information and y'all can let me know what you think in the comments. In 2015, he was performing with One Direction and he was introducing their song, Girl Almighty. He said, it's about trying to find that number one woman in your life, which none of you can relate to since most of you are girls, except for the boys here you know what I'm talking about. And this caused a bit of controversy because of how heteronormative what he said was. If you don't know what heteronormity is, according to this definition on verywellmind.com, it is the assumption that everyone is straight. It's the idea that romantic and sexual relationships are always between one man and one woman. Heteronormity assumes heterosexuality is the default sexual orientation and the only normal or natural way to express sexuality and attraction. And as you can see, what Liam said was heteronormative and that caused him to be accused of being homophobic. And then those accusations set off a whole bunch of tweets from him. I am in no way, shape or form homophobic. That's a ridiculous thing to say and I'm not here to offend people, so take it as you will. So annoying trying your hardest to make people happy in a show and you think about all the notes you tried to hit higher or a little sweeter. And all people want to concentrate on was a throwaway statement about a song that I love. And then in September 2015, he was featured on the front cover of Gay UK magazine, Attitude. And in the publication, he made some comments about pride flags showing up in concerts. He said, when the gay marriage law changed in the US, there were loads of rainbow flags flying at our shows. But I think that was mainly because people think of the Louis and Harry thing, which is absolutely nuts and drives me insane. And fans weren't happy with this because the flags have nothing to do with Louis and Harry. The flags are so that they can feel supported if their favorite artist or band recognizes it. And just saying, but a couple of days after Liam's article, Harry picked up a pride flag and ran around stage with it. And apart from those two instances, there have been other situations that fans have taken issue with over the years. I won't go into them too much, but I feel like I should mention them. So I'll just put up the quotes on the screen. Basically, he had some words to say about Harry dressing in a non-masculine way. And in 
in the election in the UK, he seemed to suggest he wanted to keep the current Prime Minister at that time, Boris Johnson. And similar to the Duck Dynasty fellow Liam was supporting, Boris Johnson has been hit with claims of racism and homophobia before as well. So people felt as though that Liam was yet again supporting someone with bigoted views. Anyways, time to move a bit away from that and talk about his solo music career. So in 2019, Liam released his debut album, LP1. It debuted at 111 on the Billboard 200 and it sold just 9,500 copies in its first week. In comparison to all of the other members of One Direction at that time, they had all debuted on the Billboard 200 at number one and sold hundreds of thousands of copies in their first week. So Liam's release was considered a flop in every sense of the word. And selling the least amount of units by such a huge margin was quite a shock. His debut single, Strip That Down, was a pretty big success and he had amassed a pretty big fan base from his time in One Direction, so for his debut album to be such a flop was pretty unexpected, especially considering that on top of that, he's been able to bring his name into the headlines before. Liam is the one member of the band who has talked about a One Direction reunion more than any of them. There are so many instances of him suggesting that One Direction will reunite even going as far as giving a time frame that they will come together again. And these little glimpses of hope that he has given to the fans over the years cause a massive surge in discussion amongst the fan base, as well as tons of headlines. But he just wasn't able to drum up any sort of hype around his album, and any hype that there was was quickly staunched by the controversy surrounding its launch. There were a number of reasons why it was believed that his album didn't perform well, and one of them was because of the controversy surrounding it. As soon as his album dropped, there were claims of biphobia in the lyrics of his song, both ways. Liam was being accused of fetishizing bisexual women. Some of the lyrics include, my girl, she like it both ways. She like the way it all taste. Switching the lanes like a Bugatti sport. Any momentum that the album had was put to a halt from this controversy. Another reason it is believed that his album didn't perform well is because his album didn't feel personal to him. It just seemed like a bunch of pop songs thrown into the album. He released his debut in 2019, whereas Niall and Harry released theirs in 2017. And I think that's a fairly clear indication that he had more difficulty deciding where he wanted to take his album and what he wanted his sound to be. In an interview with Daily Star, he talks about being pigeonholed in a hole that he did not want to be pigeonholed in. Explaining he felt compelled to up the sex appeal after his uber successful debut single, Strip That Down, Liam26 continued, I had writing to do with Strip That Down, but I didn't necessarily write the song. After that, a lot of the songs I got sent from then on were all sexually based. I was pigeonholed into this kind of thing, and of course, I am a younger guy, I'm interested in that sort of stuff, I like the idea of the songs and the grooves or certain vibes, so I was like, okay, let's go for it. And this is also confirmed on Logan Paul's podcast when he talks about not knowing who he is. Still don't know who I am, I replicate different people on a daily basis. Like, I, I still don't know who I am. That's the worst part of it because it's like selling an identity to people that... I, I, I'm me, so I can only sell me and then the different thing was I'd just gone out of the writing zone I don't want to say why, but I'd stop writing in that sense. And it was more difficult to write for my own project because I was like trying to pull from my own life, which is also very vastly confused. When a boy who's been locked in a hotel room since he was 15 years old. So I don't even know what I like. So what can I write songs about? So despite not working out what he felt comfortable with musically, he settled on a hypersexual generic pop album. And then most recently, Liam went on Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive. And much like his solo career, this did not go well for him. The end result of this podcast was him coming off as very bitter and jealous towards his former bandmates because he was airing out One Direction's dirty laundry left and right. So one thing that he said was that he outsold everyone in One Direction with his single Strip That Down. Yeah, we did the first song, Billion Streams. I think it outsold ev everybody within the band and I was the last to go oh and I never God. expected that. And I'm sat there going, shit, it's gone rather well, hasn't it? <laughs> it was kind of weird for him to boast about that for a couple of reasons. One being because it's just blatantly not true at all. And secondly, because he was saying it on Logan Paul's podcast, which is kind of ironic. Don't get me wrong, Logan's podcast is one of the biggest in the world. But while Harry and Niall are going on these massive talk shows, 
Liam's over here on Logan Paul's podcast. I mean, it is very fitting, but why boast about outselling your bandmates when th there's a clear example that you clearly haven't right in front of us, which is the setting that you're sitting in? Like, he'd be over there with Niall and Harry on these talk shows if his claims were actually true. He also came for Zayn in this podcast, airing out his personal life and basically saying that he's not respectful. She tweeted something about get yourself like a respectful man or something. Yeah, yeah. That one didn't age very well. It didn't age. <laughs> Again, a little ironic considering he's saying disrespectful things himself. Liam also claims that he was the honorary member of One Direction and that the band was built around him. Part of the reason One Direction was made was because of Simon's promise to me that in two years, I'll make this work for you. Wow. So he kind of started with my face and then worked around the, the, the rest. I've never told that story before. You, so. you, were, you wow. were the inception. I was the honorary member of One Direction, yes. And as absurd as it was for him to say this, I do believe it. I definitely don't believe that the band was built for him, but I do believe that he was the first option when the idea of a band came up. I think the idea of a band just came up and Simon was just like, oh, this guy was here a couple of years ago. He's the most experienced. He's a shoe in And as I talked about earlier, he was always put front and center in every performance. So yeah, I do believe that he was the main guy. But back to why I think he brought this up on the podcast, I think he brought it up because his ego is bruised. He went from being the main guy in the band to then being usurped by Harry in the band and then being the worst selling artist when they went solo. So yeah, I can see how his ego was probably a little bit hurt, so he felt the need to announce that the band was built around him publicly. It also seems like he tries to do some revisionism on what kind of genre of music the band made. He claims by the fifth album that One Direction was a rock band. And the one thing we did very clever in One Direction, if you go back and listen to the albums now, is that every time we made a new album, <laughs> we slightly turned the influence of rock up. Slightly turned the influence. Mm. Slightly turned, to the point where on the fifth album, you know, I had uh, the main singer from the Eagles message Nile and be like, that's the best song you've ever written. And it was one of the songs that we wrote. Wow. You know, I mean, I, 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 the, the amazing things. And this is what was nice for me at the end to become an accomplished rock star because you want to be in a boy band, but you don't want to be in a boy band that's, that's cheesy, you know what I mean? It's like that kind of makes you edge away from it a little, little bit, not to say. But for us, we became like a solidified rock band. I don't think anyone needs me to reiterate this, but they were not a rock band. And the reason why I bring this up, because I think it ties into Liam's struggle with finding out what kind of artist he is. Because in an old interview, Liam says that the Eagles are his favorite band. And then that interviewer relays that information to Niall, who is a huge fan of the Eagles. Like whenever Niall is asked what his favorite song or his band is, it's always the Eagles. And when Niall hears that Liam has said that his favorite band is the Eagles, Niall is totally dumbfounded. But also I should say Liam chose the Eagles. Liam chose the Eagles? As his favorite band. Did he? That's the most random thing I've ever heard. It's like he made that up on the spot. <laughs> I'd say he knows two Eagles songs, Hotel California and Desperado, like everyone else. <laughs> Are you livid about that? Yeah, actually I'm. I can't believe that. And I think that's pretty telling. I think he's trying to rewrite history that One Direction was a rock band for a couple of reasons. I think one reason is to distance himself from his poorly performing pop album. I think he's possibly trying to make it seem as though the reason why it flopped was because it wasn't a rock album, which is something that he's apparently so familiar with. Or maybe he just wants to be a rock singer. Perhaps he wishes that's what he was and he's trying to convince himself that he was one all along. But that is just my opinion, but I do think there is some sort of connection there. But yeah, I really don't see One Direction reuniting now. My prediction is that they will come back together for a one-off charity thing, and it will be a long, long time from now. There is no way this band is getting back together. <laughs> but yeah, that is pretty much everything for this video. Just a reminder, I have an exclusive video available for Patreon members about the whole Tyler Oakley and Liam Payne situation. So if you wanna see that, the link to sign up is in the description box below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water, be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens. And I'll see you in my next video.